Right, welcome everybody to episode five of the Proud Terry Weekly Review. Uh, just a few intros I just want to do before uh, we get going this evening. Um, obviously, I um, just want to wish you all a happy Easter and hope you had a brilliant weekend for sure. Um, like I said, I think it was quite a long weekend for a lot of people, so you know, um, I think people would be happy with that. Um, also, I want to touch upon the um, football for your transphobia campaign, which ended last Wednesday. I want to kind of reflect on that just quickly now. Um, I think it was a really big success, um, you know, in terms of, you know, the awareness that was raised and, you know, more clubs getting involved, um, which was amazing to see because, like I say, uh, there's so many issues in our game in terms of, you know, in the LBDQ plus community in terms of, you know, the challenges that we face in football. Um, but yeah, um, that was a um, really successful campaign, what, probably the best that we've, um, you know, the best one yet, really. So that's really positive news for sure in terms of the community. Um, obviously, the game on Saturday was um, dedicated to the Kick It Outs campaign, the Take a Stand, um, which is, you know, it's kind of you know, like calling for action um, in the fight against discrimination in football. So it's kind of like saying, you know, obviously when we can get back into stadiums and things like that, you know, um, taking a stand if you hear any kind of discrimination, obviously if you want to head over to the Kick It Out page, um, there's more information on how, um, and a bit more about the campaign and also how you can pledge your support. Really. So, yeah, um, right. So we're just about to get underway. That's my intro done now. So um, yeah. I, I would like to welcome onto the show um, Evening Ruben, who... Um, has kindly, um, you know, agreed to come on, um, like I say, and um, appreciate your support of the group for sure. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, yeah, but yeah, um, welcome. Yes, thank you. Happy to be here. And yeah. So yeah, um, great. Um, so yeah, let's get straight on to it now. Then. So um, obviously, we was playing Brentford on Saturday. And let's just go through this, <laughs> like obviously the team selection and kind of just uh, set the scene in that aspect. Because I know that every time a match day comes around, I'm always looking forward yeah, to yeah. things like, you know. And then obviously um, seeing, you know, kind of making assumptions of how we'll line up and things like that. So, um, like I said, I was really happy with the, the team, um, you know, when I saw it. Um, like I said, I've been a bit, big advocate of, like, you know, uh, playing like Vallejo and Hogan, though, that we can't play them in every game, you know, that yeah, yeah. play in terms of because they're similar players. But I think, you know, this game on Saturday was the right game to, to have them back in together. And like I say, we'll go into more details about how that went um, a bit later. But yeah, um, like I say, it, it really did. Um, you know, it's going to have that solid foundation. Um, but yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. And um, what was your reaction to the, uh, like I say, I'll go for the team now. So obviously we lined up in goal. Uh, Ryan Schofield, then De Haney. Uh, Keo, uh, P. Prince, uh, uh, Vallejo, Lewis O'Brien, Fraser Campbell, Jonathan Hawk, uh, Dwayne Holmes, and uh, Sunova. What was your reaction to the lineup? And how did? Um, how... Yeah, I, I like the lineup. To be fair, uh, obviously De Haney was quite a surprising one to see again. Obviously, Corbran must be he must be showing to me in training. To obviously, be in the squad. Um, obviously, to be fair though, he did play well, so it was good to see him play. I thought that I thought yeah, like he said, playing Hogg and Vallejo, but then again. I do think Vallejo plays a really good makeshift centre back. To be fair, and we've doing, been doing that a lot this season. Uh, the midfield all looked pretty solid up front with Campbell and Sonogo and all them. Lot. Obviously, that were pretty good. And, and yeah, it were, it were pretty solid lineup to be fair before the game. Obviously, especially coming up against Brentford. Yeah, and I also kind of, I've kind of like been stuck this season about how you know how I like the formation to be because, like I said, I like the formation that we played on on Saturday because, like I say, it's quite narrow. You know, that four two three one kind of formation. But it actually, again, it was really effective as well. So I know we've seen a few formations this season, but I'm still kind of thinking, well, what, you know, it, I suppose it depends on who you're playing, really. But I suppose it's important to, to have a consistent formation, regardless. Of yeah, yeah. But we're still finding that, obviously. 
Yeah, I prefer, I do like the formation. I like playing three at the back. I think it's a lot better, especially when we have two full backs. Well, obviously when Toffolo is in injured, obviously I liked him playing two attacking full backs. I think Pippa plays a lot better higher up the pitch. I think Gary, he can defend at times in that full back position, but I do like him to be pushing up further. Same with Toffolo. Toffolo probably can defend a bit more, but I think playing them as two kind of wing backs or even wingers, you like to call them, it's a lot better. And obviously, depending who you've got um, at the back, yeah, really good to be fair. Yeah, definitely. Um, so obviously, um, let, let's talk about the start of the match now. And obviously, um, you know, getting that early goal, you know, you know yeah, yeah, we actually started the game really brightly as well, you know, and we and we kind of, you know, we didn't really um give Brentford much of a chance in terms of you know get, creating any chances. I don't know, I couldn't actually remember any um you know clear cut chances that it had, but I felt like yeah. we dictating the play of it, you know, and um, like I say, uh, I've got like a few key points that I want to cover, uh, but obviously the goal, you know, uh, again, um, you know, um, Vallejo, great pressure on the ball, you know, he wins it, you know, and then he sets Lewis O'Brien on his way, and obviously, you know, when he's clear on through in goal, you know, you kind of thinking to yourself, um, well, I don't know, it, went, when it was quite a quick um, turnaround, but um, Lewis O'Brien, like I say, well, we'll go on to Lewis O'Brien a bit later, but um, he he's been absolutely outstanding. You know, I think we're really seeing the best yeah. of him. You know, and um, like I say, he he finished the goal, you know, really well as well. You know, and um, so yeah, a great piece of play, and we deserve that lead early on for sure. Yeah, to be fair, I did actually like the goal. To be fair, I like obviously as Veya is running back, he's expecting him to probably go far post, and then obviously because he's running at that speed, it's probably better to put it back his near post, and obviously he hasn't got the time to react and then dive the other way. And I thought it was actually a nice goal. To be fair, obviously, I think we were tackled in Vallejo, yeah, Vallejo with the tackle and obviously Lewis O'Brien nicked. So obviously we took that early lead. I thought we were pretty solid to be fair. I think first, like, even up until like 30, 20 minutes, obviously, we they didn't really do anything. We were pretty good. And and obviously Vallejo got injured. That were pretty bad. Obviously, to be fair though, obviously to say you were on the pitch 20 minutes, you were the best player by far. Like, the tw- you know, I, I so genuinely think we could have had a lot of better chance of winning that game, even not conceding the goal, because obviously we did have to change that up a bit when Vallejo went off. So I think that kind of paused us like playing the football more to play, definitely. Yeah, which leads on to my first point that I've got on the key points that I want to cover tonight. And, um, you know, Alex Vallejo was so key to our plans. And obviously when he came off, you know, it was the 23rd minute. I think it was a really nasty head clash that day, you know, and obviously... yeah. Didn't quite recover from that, unfortunately. I know he tried to carry on, but he just wasn't right, unfortunately. And um, like I say, um, you know, that properly did change the game because, like I say, before you could see like the before and after effect of it, you know, like obviously when we had him in for that first 20 odd minutes, you know, um, you know, it was really, you know, it, 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 it you know, we weren't really, we looked very solid, um, and then there was not, there was not, um, you know, there wasn't as much space either. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, when when Vallejo uh, came off, um, you know, then then I start, you know, I started to see a lot more space, unfortunately. But it's interesting that, you know, I know that there was two choices that could have come on. You know, it was either between Bakun or Scott High to come on. Personally, I would have brought on Scott High because I feel like he's. I, th- I think you know what we've seen of him. So I know we haven't seen much of him, but obviously I followed him through the academy level, and I know it's a different level, but. I feel like he he could have maybe thrived in a game like this, maybe yeah, and yeah. with Bakuna. Um, I, I'm just unfortunately, I'm just not not a, not a fan of. Yeah. The, I thought it was terrible when he came on. I thought obviously I know this was later on in the game, but I'm just gonna say it now. The I think he took about four or five set pieces, and every single one went to the first player. That were in front of Brentford on a corner, it'd be going straight to their first man. And it was such it was so annoying to watch because one of the things we do in every match, no matter what match it is, we cannot take set pieces. We can't defend them and we can't, you know, we can't even score set pieces. I think, you know, why are you letting him take it over and over again when he simply can't even get it over the first man? You know, it is a joke, really. Mm-hmm. Obviously, chances like that against teams like Brentford where actually are you going to create a lot in a game? No. So you need chances like that. And we see it with other teams in the Championship. Most teams at the bottom of the league, obviously, I thought today with Preston, they obviously got a long throw in and scored it against obviously a big Swansea team. So obviously, you know, stuff like this is so important and when you can't even do it, it's so like frustrating to watch. 
Yeah, like I said, I think the Coon is just far too unreli unreliable for me. And like I say, um, I think prior to Vallejo coming off, I think I saw a stat that, you know, Brentford had one shot on target and then they produced the furthest six in that first half alone when Vallejo came off. And, and you know, that's that speaks volumes really of the impact that he was ha that Vallejo had really because, like I say, when he was on the pitch, Vallejo, you know, he's... His passing is just, you know, brilliant. You know, not yeah. one of the passes went astray really in that first twenty odd minutes. And like I say, his movement, his movement too, his, his overall game for me is just really, really impressive. Yeah. Like when he first came to the club, obviously uh, we didn't see a lot of him straight away. Obviously, I didn't rate him that much. I thought he's just going to be another then player sat in the B team, sat on the bench. Obviously, he won't bring up to the team. But especially since he's been playing at centre back, I've seen so much more. Like even though we bought him as a midfielder, like as, you know, a holding midfielder, he plays so better as a centre back. Like he just. Like you said, his positioning, he's so calm on the ball as well. Like, you know, we've all, you know, playing passing out from the back, you know, none of them players can do it, but he's one player that can definitely pass out the back, especially at Akio, Kassar and him, especially in that match. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah. Spot on there, like, so I think that's, um, you know, that, that was the first point uh, covered, really. But I think what I want to move on to now is obviously... I know that Carlos has had his fair critics of, you know, of his selections, you know, and his tactics at times, but I think we've got to give him praise for, you know, getting spot on on Saturday for sure, because he was really, he really got it spot on, you know, and um, yeah, I think he, he deserves that praise. I think, I think uh, quickly moving on, I, I feel like, you know, the set piece struggles uh, for me is really evident, you know, um, like I say, um, you know, the goals we've conceded from set pieces, you know, is 13. And, and like I say, it's, um, you know, comparing it to other teams in the league, you know, only Bristol City, Barnsley and Rotherham have shipped more goals from, you know, in, in the league this season in terms of from set pieces. I think that's really a major issue, really, within our side at the minute. And also, I know that, you know, you know, you know, the first part of the, you know, the first part of the season, you know, and, uh, Attacking wise, you know, set pieces were quite, you know, really good actually. But since the new year, to me, we're just not, we're just not creating um, enough from set pieces. We're not taking advantage of the set pieces enough for me, and and this is yeah. really worrying, really for me, and frustrating as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't see one player in that team that can take one. Like, if we're in front of a goal, like maybe in Benza Bakuna, yeah, they can score them. But when they're like outside the box on the like corner of the area, it's just not good enough. Like. I, you know, when you're getting free kicks against teams like Benford, where like as a team we don't we don't score a lot of goals. Like you know, our strikers don't do a lot. So when we get these chances, we need to really take them because that's why we had about like seven, eight set pieces. Lewis O'Brien got put down in that like corner in the second half about four times, and Bakuna has put it in the exact same spot straight back to a Brentford player. And a few of them have caused pressure then on other players to get the ball back on their counter attack. And I, I don't know, I don't know who to blame for that. But if you know, if you can see he's doing it like loads of times, just put someone else on it. Like there were loads of other players that could have took it. You know, it's so annoying to see. Like you know, even Navi Sar could take a better set piece than Bakuna. Like it, it's not even a joke. Like he, he genuinely could have done better from some of them situations. And it's really annoying to see. Obviously. One of the only players that was like, you know, running was O'Brien, and to see him really getting stuck in and getting these fouls for us, just to watch Bakuna just give it straight back to a Brentford player, it just does seem like a real waste, to be fair. And obviously, I don't know who to blame for, you know, who decides who's taking, but is it Carlos? Is it just kind of who wants it, you know? Yeah. No, Bakuna, I think Bakuna seems to be straight over to set piece, to be fair, when, when as soon as we get them. So I don't think it's. I don't think Bakun is on the set piece personally, but I'm not going to speculate anything. But it doesn't look like it to me when I'm watching. You know the way. It, it, yeah, yeah. But but like I say, it's. Um, I think I don't understand why Benz is not being played lately either. Because like I say, he's the one person that can cross a ball at times. I know he, he sometimes he can go a bit, you know, to waste a bit. But he 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 does have the ability to cross a ball and he really is effective as well. Uh, like I said, this season has been, you know, really positive for him. And um, like I said, I think that, you know, um, you know, playing someone up like, you know, like Sonogo with him, you know, obviously Sonogo is good, you know, aerially, but it, it'd be good to see that partnership a bit more because I know that we won't, we're not really seeing much of that partnership uh, develop as such because, you know, like I said, they've only had about 
seen from the stats about 30 minutes that they've played together so far. So I think going forward, it would be nice to see them uh, be given an opportunity to, to maybe create something uh, from that. That's something that I've picked out really. Yeah, exactly. Like on in Benza, like I haven't seen him properly play since Middlesbrough when obviously he got that groin injury and early on. And I genuinely haven't seen him play for 90 minutes yet since then. I don't know what, what's going on there because you don't say he's injured. You know, I don't know, maybe something behind the scenes, maybe he's injured or maybe he just didn't fit to play or he didn't do all in training. I don't know, but it's hard to see there. Yeah, but for me, for him, for, like, you know, and Benza seems to get tired way too easily for me. And I don't know whether that's to do with it. I don't know. And that's maybe why he's not lasting the full 90, because ultimately he's just too tired to, to get through that 90 minutes, which is questionable, really. And I don't really understand how that can be possible and, and why that is the case, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Like when you've got someone like Imbenzo who is a winger, like and you know, players like players like Richard Keogh are lasting longer than him. He don't look good, but I don't know. We really need him. You know, if he's struggling to play ninety minutes, you know, get him on treadmill, get him doing some cardio. Because like I'm not joking, we need him on the pitch. Like you know, he's one of the key players, especially even Bakuna. I'm not one thing that stopped Bakuna from being a qual one of the best in the championship is his attitude, and it's just. I don't know, is he too overconfident sometimes? Like you said, he's always running over to the set pieces and then just giving them away. Like Sometimes his confidence is too high and then sometimes we can, especially when we go 1-0 one down, one nil down in a game, he just, his head goes, you know, there's no point having him on pitch at that point. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with that. Like I said, that's spot on with Bakuna. Like I said, we're not, we're not picking out Bakuna here, but ultimately, um, you know, he's very frustrating to watch. And like I say, it's... What I what the impression I get with the Coon is unfortunately it's all about him and he's not really a team player. And to me, that doesn't fit the Huddersfield Town way because Huddersfield Town are built upon a t you know, built you know, working together hard as a team, not just being all about yourself. So I, I don't really think he fits the Huddersfield Town ethos anyway, to be honest with you. And his attitude yeah. and his work rate as well. Work rate is poor. You, you never yeah. see him using that or trying to you know, I, I don't see or we may see it from time to time, but we don't see it enough. And, yeah, you know, exactly. You know, he ain't it, a team fighter. He, he, if we're losing at a game or it's not going, you know, the way we want it to go, he won't try. Like, uh, you know, we bought him in, I think it was the sea, we are like second season at Prem, the summer of the second season, or we're the first season. No, I don't think we, we didn't buy him in the first season, we bought him in the second season, didn't we? And ever since then, I've never seen, like, I've always seen that glimpse of like, yeah, he could be quality. We, we spent a decent amount of money on, on him as well. And he's just not progressed in the way, like, you know, people say it all the time. I've seen, you know, other championship YouTubers say, it. I've seen Sky Pundit say it. he has the ability at the times to be one of the best in goal places. But when, you aren't, when you've got a bad attitude, when you've got maybe too overconfident, when you're not a team player, you're just not going to go anywhere. And, you know, obviously, you know, Corbrand chooses to pick him because he probably is only one of the players that kind of like, we haven't really got another attacking midfielder like him. You know, I don't see like, Dwayne Holmes don't really fit that role that we kind of need him to play. And then, yeah. Yeah, like I say, it may be just the case of nobody else that's able to play. But, like I say, I'm always an advocate of giving the youth a chance. And like I said, I feel like Bakuna shouldn't, be, shouldn't have come on the pitch um, when uh, Vallejo came off. To me, to me, it should have been Scott High. But anyway, that, the decision was made and that was yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I think let, let's go to the, um, obviously, the, the, the goal that we conceded now. And to me, it, it, it's just, from start to finish, it was just, barring the star brilliant clearance off line, um, you know, what I hate to see is when players do not play to that whistle. And, you know, um, you could see Peeper and Campbell, you know, you know, too busy protesting to the linesman about, you know, it, who was throwing it was. And, you, you know, from that point, our defence was all over the place. Uh, obviously, um, you know, great crossing. And um, like I say, um, towards Pontus Janssen. And like I say, Sar, you know, Sar brilliant clearance. But... But then after that, you know, it's kind of like, well, where is the, where is the defending at? You know, like I said, it was from that starting thing, and that was the, that was the big disappointment for me, really. You know, the, the, the you know, too many players just marking themselves, for instance, and not actually being focused or switched on. And so that goal that they scored was very unavoidable. And like I said, there's no excuses for a player to be in the penalty. Yeah. 
unmarked totally like Sorensen was where he put it away. Yeah, exactly. I think it was mistakes after mistakes in like a space of about 20 seconds. I thought, obviously, obviously Pippa and Campbell were protesting that everyone were just kind of just not concentrating. And even then, after the shot is taken, as Duke Schofield should save that at his paw, the ball ain't going too fast. And as a goalkeeper, and as someone who like I do closely like look at Schofield and not think he's the right man for the job, yeah, obviously at his age. But I just he should be saving that, you know, stick a leg out. He watches his head literally turns as the ball goes in, which shows he knows the ball's there. He hasn't just like he hasn't just bulleted straight in and he's kind of not even seen it. He knows the ball's coming at him, he knows he's gonna shoot. And just not stick a leg out, try at least, because he were stood, he were frozen, and it was just shocking to see. But then again, not just blaming him, everyone else in the box, what are you doing? Like, you know, we get it off the line, like get the ball out. Don't just like yeah, exactly stupid. Like we do it all the time. Yeah. Don't just stand there, you know, it's not over yet. Yeah, he's cleared it off the line. Well done, you know. You know, concentrate, get the ball out. You know, it was so annoying, especially after Sars. I what didn't don't get the praise for that because obviously the goals ended up going in anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, I, say, I still recognise that as an absolutely outstanding um, clearance. But like I say, it, it didn't really make a difference ultimately. And I think that's what we will have as well. He won't really remember that to be to, to be honest, because we still conceded. Um, and ironically, it was Bakuna's man who put it away in the end. So like I say, Sorensen shouldn't have beat it. Bakuna let left him. And like I say, I'm not picking up Makuna, but ironically, it is the guy that we're saying that isn't quite switched on all the time. And it's just not, a, in this league, you're not able to do it. Like yeah, I, said, I didn't really recognise that Scope. Like I say, I think the strike, the strike from Sorensen was quite close. I don't think the keeper could have done much anyway. So, but maybe that's just me. But I don't think uh, Schofield did much wrong, really, in that aspect. Mm, yeah, anyway. I guess obviously, yeah. And then even after the goal, they went on to hit the post about. And I think that's a whole team problem. After conceding, we just look so bad. We look, especially in a game where actually, and I think this is every week for Town, if we go one nil up against a decent team, even against a bad team, like lower end table team, we can't expect to win that game one. It's not going to happen. It is never going to happen. We needed that second goal. I knew they were going to switch on at some point and straight out from half time and they've switched on. They've got a goal. They've run at the other end. Tony's at the post. You know, it was just a lack of concentration for about 10 minutes in that game. We were so lucky. And we were even, we were so lucky that Brentford, after doing that, just kind of stopped again and kind of went back to how they were in the first half. So we were pretty lucky, especially in that 10 yeah. minutes period. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I think, as you're saying that, I'm kind of picking up that actually, maybe our, you know, tactic wise wasn't spot on because. When we scored the goal, we didn't really seem to go for that second. And ultimately, when you're playing against a team like Brentford, who, you know, they, 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 you know they've scored a lot of goals. I'm not sure exactly how many they've scored, but they have yeah. scored a lot of goals. Obviously, they're up there for a reason. They've scored a lot. Why did we sit back when we scored? Because that's just inviting pressure on, and, yeah. and then, like, yeah. Yeah, you know, chance after chance. And there was bound to score in it. So I don't really yeah. know the side of why Carlos felt the need it's to. Like do that. Yeah, exactly. Especially after their their keeper was doing very dodgy things. Like obviously he was the mistake for the first he came out when he didn't really need to. Their defense was all over the place once we scored that goal. So you know that there's pressure on them now. Their goalkeeper's just done a howler as well as like three of their defenders or three of their players. You know there's pressure on there. They've drawn the last two games in a row. There's pressure there. So instead of just sitting back, go for that next goal because I'm telling you man, if we'd have gone for that goal, we'd have got that goal because you know, but then again, that problem, it's, I want to talk about these two now. I want to talk about Campbell, especially. I just, I love the guy. Obviously, he is a, you know, he is a town fan as well. You know, he loves the club. But does he bring anything to this team that any other player in the team could bring? He doesn't. You can run about for 90 minutes all you want. But if you're not putting the ball in the back of the net, I don't care what you're doing. You need to get off the pitch. Because genuinely, you can run down your man. You can chase your man. But when you get the ball, what are you doing? You're doing nothing. And it's the same thing. Like you could say, oh, yeah, we brought Sonogo and Campbell's putting the pressure on. Sonogo's finishing. But not even Sonogo's a finisher. Sonogo's more of like a hold-up player. He brings other people into the game. But then again, he's just bringing in... Who's he bringing into the game to score the goals? No one. Genuine. And even when Karoma comes back, is he going to be the same player we walked before that injury? We don't know. Obviously, it's just a gamble at this point. We could, he could come back and be like he was and all, you know, we've got a goal scorer again. But there is that chance that he'll come back, won't be the same player. 
you know, at, well, at least at the start. So it is a real problem for us. I think the recruitment's horrible. I think to see Naise or whatever his name is get injured already just shows is that another Danny Ward? You know, why are we buying players that haven't played for that long? It just don't make sense. You know, yeah, I know the window shut, so you're kind of short on options, but like, you know, it just don't make sense to me. It really, really doesn't. Honor. And I think that's why the goals aren't going in realistically in most games. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, like, see, I would touch upon what you said about Campbell. And obviously, I totally agree with that. Like, see, I think. I saw a stat the other day, I didn't note it down, but I saw a stat that, you know, his goal scoring since he's played, since he's come in and the game he's played is just shocking, really, for a striker. And like I say, people may argue that he's not had the service and things like that. And, you know, but actually he has had chances to score more than he has. Um, and ultimately, you, you know, we, we still we still find ourselves not scoring enough goals. And, and all, you know, we have to look towards the top end of the pit. We have to look at, you know how what we're creating as well, obviously. But you know when we are having chances, you've got to put them away. Unfortunately, Campbell. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't... You know, in most games we do create chances. Like we do create the chances, but we just don't have anyone to shoot or score the goal. And I genuinely think you know there is some sort of like loyalty to Campbell in that sense. And I think it is kind of annoying because I feel like Corbran, yeah. He do, he try you know he works his ass off every game. He'll do what he he'll do what he you know he'll try. But genuinely, I don't see him trying to score like even the goals he has scored this season have been poor. Like one where he slipped over and luckily scored it. You know he scored some kind of controversial kind of maybe on another day he misses that. But genuinely, I don't see him being you know next season he's only going to get worse. Like you know he's old now. And obviously, if we don't go out in the summer and buy another striker, even if Chrome is still good, we can't rely on Chrome, mate. He's like not even like 25. He's, he's still very, very young. And you know it's bad when we're relying on, you know, oh, just wait till Chrome comes back, wait till he comes back. You know, it just shows the lack of goals in the team. You know, we can't be looking further down the pitch for people to score the goals. You know, when you know that Nabi Sarge, your top goal scorer, you know, it is really bad. Like when he's scoring more goals than the top end of the pitches, it's shocking. And we got very lucky to even score the goal against Brentford. That's what we've really got to realise. We wouldn't got that point without Brentford making that mistake, really. Yeah, but I feel like we forced them into that mistake, though, in all fairness. And like, see, it was. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. You know, if you're not pressing the player, then they're going to make a mistake, aren't they? So it was credit to us for that goal for me. Um, touched upon, obviously, Karoma, right? Obviously, he's been out for a long time. And, you know, you don't know what player you're going to see when you when he gets back. But, and, and he's not going to be the same player to start with. But, like I say, I feel like, um, and that's the big thing, when he got injured, he, were, he was in the form of his life and, and obviously it's come to a halt and, and like I say, but um, you just don't know. We'll have to wait and see with that one. And with yeah. Campbell, obviously, Campbell's out of contract this summer as well, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. <laughs> uh, and obviously um, with uh, Nias as well. I think when I saw that he got injured, I just thought, you know what, it just pretty much sums that up really because ultimately... Like, like, like you said, I totally agree. Why are we going out and getting players that, that are injury point? Obviously, with the ass, he's only with us till the end of the season. But what happens if he hardly plays and then it comes to it, surely we'll have to let him go. Um, because if we haven't seen him, then we can't really... And the, yeah. the big thing about, you know, obviously we saw Ward briefly on, on Saturday, but why have we signed somebody that is still injury prone to a three-year deal? Obviously, it's two years at the end of this season. But why? I don't understand why. Why are we looking for players that are so? They're not going to give us a game week in week out, and they're not going to be distributors. Yeah. So why are we signing? We're looking for players like that. Yeah, exactly. And just going back to that summer window, we were so close to signing. I don't know his name when I like Adi Bayeda from Walsall. Yeah. I think and then he went to call Luton. Look at him now. He's scoring like. You know, a goal every game for Luton, it's so annoying. And we were closer than Luton to signing him. And then we've gone like, oh, no, we'll, we'll drop out. We'll go sign, like, I don't know, go sign Blim Sonogo or something. Like, he's a joke. Like, yeah, he is you know. a joke. I totally agree. And the recruitment policy has been shocking for for a few years now. Not yeah. just, this is what's caught, catching up with us now. We're left with players that ultimately are just not good enough but we can't sell them on because nobody wants them or whatever, you know, and we've just stuck with them, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, it, it's just the total wrong, uh, you know, mentality that we've got in terms of recruitment. We, we've got to really yeah. 
uh, it's a big summer ahead and we've got to get it spot on. Because... Yeah, exactly, because we're just going to get closer and closer to relegation. Like, even today, we are back in that relegation worry again now, obviously. Uh, Wickham is like eight points off safety now, but not on that. Wednesday, well, I don't know if Wednesday are winning right now, but they were winning when I checked. Obviously, Coventry beat like Bristol 3 1 at home, so that's more worrying for us. Preston and Forest all won, so that kind of puts us like that kind of stops us from moving further out of that position. Yeah. But it's just worrying, and every season it's going to get worse if we don't. This summer is basically, mate, if we don't buy anyone, I'll, I will literally say we're going down because there's no way, like, especially if we don't buy a striker and Campbell gets on. If Campbell doesn't. Like, if Cameron decides to leave or we don't decide to lose his contract, but we don't buy anyone, then, you know, we're screwed. But if you're saying that if we don't get played, but it's surely, out of the 13 players that are out of contract, I don't think we'll keep that many, even, you know, one or two maybe, but apart from that, I don't think we'll keep. So, you know, these places there that will be up for, So there will be big changes this summer, I believe. It's just about getting the, the right signings in, unfortunately. And, and yeah, exactly. there's no excuses now. We, we've got like, to get you know, it. Yeah. Like, you know, you can use coronavirus as your, your excuse, but at the end of the day, you're running a football club. You, you've got to spend money no matter what the circumstances are, you know. Spend, I wouldn't matter, right? I don't care. We could go blow if you have a budget for this transfer window, go buy someone good, don't spend it all like literally, like on like f- players that are just bad. Like, and some of the wages we've got players on, like Joe Pereira from Man United, he's on about 20 grand a week, and we're paying like over half of that. We're paying about him about 14 13 grand a week. I don't to do absolutely that. nothing. He's and, done like, nothing. he's not contributed at all, for, and- yeah, exactly. What debut five goals conceded against Stoke, and and like three of them he should have saved at least. Like, so, we, so we're refusing to pay weight, we're refusing to pay transfers bigger, you know, just a bit more on transfer. We're not saying a load, we're just saying a bit more on transfer, but yet we're prepared to give players a big wage that you're telling me that they deserve. Uh, when yeah. even before they've played for us, you know, the, the fact is. We've been, we've been, <laughs> we, 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 we're contradicting ourselves constantly. You know, we're, we're paying big yeah. wages on these players, and then we're saying, well, we don't want to spend a bit extra on, say, the guy that went to Luton. I, don't tell me that that guy that went to Luton. I'm not. Even, expensive. It, yeah, I'm expensive. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that. Don't tell me it's expensive. I mean, I, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce it because I'm gonna go wrong. But you know what I mean. And uh, so yeah, it, it's just shocking. Um, yeah, like I say, we, uh, we, we could go on forever about that. But like I say, we yeah. know, you know, everyone knows our recruitment policy has been shocking and it has to improve because yeah, exactly. the performances on the pitch, the problems that we've had. Yeah, you could say this season, you know, we've been so much with injuries, had so many players out. I understand that. But where's the strength in depth? We've got none. So, you know, yeah, exactly. so prepare for these injuries. I'm not saying the amount of injuries you can prepare for because we can't, but... You know, even if you had a few more players that could come in, rather than, rather than, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that the players that have come in haven't done a job. I'm just saying the strength and depth. You know, when we looked at the bench maybe, you know, a month or so back, you were thinking to yourself, what we've got nothing to bring yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. You know, now, but you know, ultimately, it's cost us this season, and you know, uh, and the yeah, it's cost us the injuries has yeah, cost. Exactly. Us. I think. Literally, the like we're at that point now as a club over the last few years where this summer window is the biggest window we've had in the last few years. You know, this window is bigger than our second prem season window because genuinely, if we don't buy the players that we need, we're going to be in a different league and it won't be the Premier League, it'll be League One. And even when we're down there, it's not going to get any better because I just genuinely say if we go down, we're done. We're not coming, we're not coming back up. We'll do a Sunderland, but we'll probably do it even worse because at least with Sunderland, they're willing to spend a bit of money. You know, we will go down spend no money, stay in that league, you know, I could see us really plummeting. This is a make or break summer this you know, this season. Bromby and Phil have really got to do something. Like I say, um I think, you know, maybe, you know, months ago we were looking really closer towards that. I'm not saying we're not looking towards the relegation zone now, but maybe with the pick up in form, uh, we've kind of gone gone a bit further away from that. But um it, it's 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 you know, it's evident that if we did if we did go down, it would be the worst thing, like you're saying, because um, League One is a tough league and there'd be no coming back because um, yeah. it'd be really difficult to, you know, and it just, 
like I say, it's a spiral effect. One relegation can turn into two, can turn into three. I, and then it's just a spiral effect. Yeah, part. exactly, I think. Yeah. yeah it's, literally, it's such a joke. And, you know, we've got to spend the money. If we don't spend the money, then I don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, we will buy players, but whether they'll be good players is another question, I'm saying. Got to get the recruitment right. And, and I think... Uh, you know, Carlos, since he's coming, he has actually found some good players in all fairness with P. Prowl and, and uh, Vallejo. So, if we can keep that current trend, and you know, obviously, Carlos has a look yeah. made uh, abroad, you know, maybe in the, you know, he yeah. does Spanish players. And on that as well, I'd give him the manager role. Obviously, he's a head coach at the moment, and I don't know whether that's an excuse to say. We don't want to let him spend money because obviously he's new to you know being a manager. Or or is it we want to know what we're spending because we want to be in control of that, not them. Because obviously that war a rumor that why Kyle got sacked. He wanted to spend. They didn't want to spend. You know yeah, out oh, the yeah. door. Yeah, definitely. So obviously that's a question for another day. But yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think with the cow was there was promise for control. And they didn't get it. But for me, the way a football club should be run anyway is. You know, whatever you want to call it, manager, head coach, whatever you want to call it, you know, they're still the manager. They should have control over who brings, who they bring in, who doesn't. That's that's the bottom line of it for me. So I don't understand why the Cowboys didn't get what they, you know, what I thought the club was doing anyway in terms of the manager should be bringing in players that he wants. Because why not? Because what is the point of why? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a bit annoying, really, but we've, we've got to move on. We've got to just hope yeah. that stuff will change, really. But, you know what, I, I'm just one of them now where, like, you know, yeah, I'm kind of just not hopeful anymore, you know. If something happens and it's good, then, yeah, I'd be surprised. But I don't expect much, especially from Lee Brown. But I hate him. I absolutely, I don't, I, you never, like, he's you not interactive. Well, not really, not, none of them really are. They're not interactive with the fans. I don't think they have that interest at art, but, yeah. No, I think I mentioned this on the show a few weeks ago, actually, that I've never seen a bigger disconnect between the fans and the club, regardless of how we, you know, I know it was more toxic, you know, when we weren't picking up any sort of result, but the reality is we're still in that position now, the yeah. disconnect between the club and the fans. Yeah, are, are, exactly. And that's the, fans. At the top, that's the yeah. people top of the responsible for that unfortunately yeah exactly every week the fans would come to the games you know I'd be down there every week you know sometimes even away games you know I'd got all them fans we come every week you know no matter what the result I think in terms of any fans in the league we will come no matter we can get smashed 6-0 every week we'd still be there in our numbers you know but just to see, you know, we want answers, you know, we can, you know, we'll lose like loads of games. We'll be like, yeah, we know, we'll still support you. But now it's getting to the point where actually there's no change being made. You know, we can keep saying, you know, fans can keep saying, I'll just wait till then, wait till then. But what's going to happen then? You know, there's no happening. They don't look like there is a lot going to happen. It's, yeah, it's, you know, yeah. obviously pretty bad. Yeah, it's not good at all. Like I say, how you, how you can recruit Lee Bromby into a role that he's never done before, I believe, in his life. I don't understand that either. There's all these questionable decisions that's been made that I don't fully understand. And, and like I say, we don't really know the ins and outs of what goes on because we don't get told much anymore. Uh, but, you know, like the chairman, you know, the, the thing I loved about Dino, now you can speak about Dino all you want about, you know, negatively or whatever you want to do. But what I liked when Dino was in charge is you felt the club was all together. And ultimately, yeah, that's exactly. gone since he's left. That's the reality. Yeah, yeah. And Phil Robinson is a different person. I understand that. But there's no reason why I can't commu communicate with the fans a bit more than he's doing. You know, he's not. Yeah, and even, yeah, even when he does, he, the, and the answers are just plain. Like, I, I think it was like in the summer of before we saw Grant and he were talking to like, like Yorkshire like some newspaper and he and they were asking him important question you know will we buy a replacement for grant you know there were just questions like oh you know it was blah blah money talking about coronavirus like every excuse for not spending money on who we were going to buy he just went down that road of pandemic 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 and i don't know if it you know yes we are in a pandemic but you know when you've got teams like wickham who spend who are spending more money than us to try and get themselves out of a hole that's even bigger than ours. You know, it is really bad. It is so terrible to see. It felt like excuses. I know when he came out and said that um, he was, um, because of the coronavirus, he hasn't been able to spend. Everyone's in the same boat. Everyone is in the same boat in the leagues, right? And people have still managed to spend money. Yes, we're not denying it's tough and everything. But the fact is, is the money that we have spent, you know, I've gone on players that, 
and improve haven't improved the squad that much at all you know mm-hmm. uh, overall anyway and we've we've bought players in for the future as well it's okay i know the future is important but at that time why did we bring in the likes of danny grant you know sober thomas why did we bring players in that wasn't ready to go straight into that team when we knew yeah, exactly. we needed squad players we needed players right. You know, we were looking in January, we were looking for a striker. Well, you know, we haven't bought anyone for Grant. We've been promised a replacement for Grant. So I think, you know, and then we go by Roland Aaron's like, mm. like, yeah, he's an all right player, but he ain't what Grant was. He never will be. Obviously, we do. We could say maybe Karoma is what has kind of turned into Grant. But, you know, players like Danny Grant and Sauber Thomas, they even said it. You know, these players are for the future. Like, they even come out and said it. It's just so annoying. Like, we're not looking for the future. Yeah, it's all right buying some players for the future. I'm not bothered about that. But, yeah, you know, no. we're looking at right now. We're in – it's not like we're, like, cruising middle middle yeah. of the table. Like, we're at the bottom. Like, you know, they need to come to the realisation. We need to play it. The, the, the annoying thing for me personally was is that we knew that we needed players for the squad straight away first team level but then we go out and get players that aren't nowhere near able to, to contribute to the first team so how does that make sense there's no logic in it anyway yeah. we could, we could yeah, go I can there, that there. Um, but yeah uh, let's focus on um, the gate like I say it is good to have a chat about that though because like I say it's it's still talking about the club uh, as a whole and it does kind of link back to the performances um, but yeah um, a player that I want to mention obviously now is obviously De Haney. I think I felt like on Saturday he had a really that was his best match for town. And yeah, he's definitely. Going under the radar, really. You know, he's making a case for himself here. And you know, like I said, with the absence of Toffolo at the minute, and um, when we play back for De Haney, he seems to be the preferred one that he goes with over Rowe. Now I understand that because I'm for me, I'm not entirely convinced Rowe has that defensive capability. And to be honest with you, I like Rowe a bit further forward anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't think he's ready to play that role when we play a back, back far anyway. So not yet anyway. So yeah, yeah. yeah um, I think De Haney, you know, if, if you look at his stats for Saturday as well, just to back up this, um, you know, um, let me have a look here. Yeah, oh, we're the only player that had a shot on target and the whole team yeah obviously that shot obviously we're a bit unlucky with that to be fair like obviously I think if you gave him that chance again he'd have put loads more power on it obviously it was close to the keeper but he did he still, I think if that if that touch that he took that massive touch of it I didn't think he wanted to go the way he did but obviously yeah pretty unlucky with that but you know at least he's trying like I say his stats backed up it like I said in terms of you know his tackles he made you know only Brentford right back um, that Ruseman made more tackles than De Haney and um, and then, um, you know, only centre back uh, Ethan Pinnock. I love Ethan Pinnock. I think he's a brilliant player. Uh, he, yeah. he, um, he matched De Haney's for in- interceptions, um, which was also free. But I think, like you say, I think the only thing with De Haney is, is that obviously his contract's up this summer. But for me, he doesn't offer as much on the ball as maybe we'd like. Like you say, that chance that, you know, he went through and, and you know, I don't know. It just doesn't offer as you know as much as maybe mm. like you know, like I say, it's you know his execution. You know, but to be honest with you, you know his overall defensively is very good. Um, can't yeah. deny that. And like I say, um, but like I say, uh, looking ahead to maybe if we do renew his contract, um, you know, if he's comfortable, you know, um, continuing to play that backup role, you know, uh, to P. Prince then maybe a, a new deal for him doesn't yeah, be the you know is the sensible option, but um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, like so, um, what did did you did, did you um, like the look of De Haney on on Saturday overall? I know you said obviously the chance that he yeah I did yeah I thought he played well. I thought obviously I thought you know obviously he don't play every week and obviously this is like a one. I do like it when I see players that are like not in the team all the time. And actually giving it a good go. Obviously, you know, he definitely, like you said, wants to make a case for himself. He ain't a first teamer. So when, you know, people like Toffolo are injured, you've really got to take your chance when it comes. And he, and I thought he did it really well, to be fair. Obviously, I thought first half, I, first 
20 minutes, there were a few like, mm, we were doing a bit like, some of the stuff were questionable, but as it got into the game, it was lo- loads more confidence, obviously, with a shot, obviously, it is a bit unfortunate for us that obviously we had him there, obviously, I think we'd have loved to have any other player there in that position, but obviously, yeah, obviously, on a, I think if he'd have took that shot again and realised, you know, we're a bit too close to the keeper, obviously, they want the most power on it, I think if he'd have just took that again, he'd have just drilled it, but uh, yeah, he was pretty unlucky with that, to be fair, I thought he was one of the best players on the pitch, you know, by far. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I said, defensively, he did his job for sure. And like I said, I think he kind of surprised himself. He's not that attacking. He's not attacking at all, is he really? Yeah, so exactly. maybe you couldn't kind of say, well, you know, it's okay. He went through when it was a great chance. But really, is he in the side to do that role? I don't think he is, unfortunately. Is yeah, exactly. He's that solid foundation at the back. Um, so the final point I want to cover is obviously, you know, in these past five games, obviously, they've been unbeaten. You know, I really notice, you know, that the players are working as hard as they can, you know, like to a man, you know, like I say, uh, every single point that we've taken has been hard, hard fought. And like I say, um, I think the thing that stands out for me most is that obviously, you know, we've missed them, but it would have been nice to have them players that make it look a bit more effortless, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like, but you could argue that the players that are out the mid, like Toffolo, Aitin, Karoma, and and Agli Schindler as well. You know, he's yeah. he's, he's a player that you know makes That's it pretty better. unfortunate. And yeah, because obviously he probably won't play again. But yeah, which is really, yeah, definitely. Which is really sad, and there's a lot of rumours going on the minute. But ultimately, he needs to get himself fit before he goes anywhere. So, but yeah, exactly. it's his big wage, unfortunately. That's um, the stomach, and I really am gutted. You know, because like I said, I do love Schindler, but like I said, time yeah. to move on, unfortunately. But like I said, yeah, exactly. Be- He's at, he'll, he'll always have a place in our hearts for sure, you know. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but I think it's just a, I think for me, it's sad the way it's ended for Schindler, unfortunately, because he deserves better than that. Yeah, he definitely does deserve to play in the shirt again. Obviously, whether he will or not, he's pretty unlucky. But obviously, we have kind of we are in that stage of season now where like there is a few players that are coming. Up. Obviously, Karoma's back in training, Aiton's back in England, which is good. Um, other players are like slowly coming back, but I thought we were. I thought again, to be fair, like it is one of them games where I think obviously we're playing a good team, and to be fair, the last few weeks we've played teams that are high up that haven't played that well. Cardiff was we had to take we had to take them because they were shocking. You know, the last the week the play they they keep them all. He even scored about two goals every game before he played us. Obviously, that game was shocking us. We missed the penalty. You know what happened? Happened. Obviously, even though, like, I, I know this is, it sounds a bit like selfish, but like, we are getting these points in the game, which is good because it's slowly getting us closer to survival or securing that. But I just don't see the progress. Obviously, I know we've got these injuries, but against Brentford yesterday, obviously we got the point, but I didn't see any progress being made as a team. Like individuals made progress, but as a team, I didn't see that progress being made. You know, De Gea he made loads of progress in that game. O'Brien every week is just getting better, better, better. And then obviously Sart is doing well as well. But I didn't see as a team, we're not going anywhere. It won't, it was the exact same kind of we played the like against Wednesday and Birmingham, they were two identical games. We played exactly the same, nothing changed. And even against Brentford, we had like one shot on target. Like if we're not including the goal, obviously because they obviously they cancelled the goal out with that goal. We didn't we only had one more chance, and that was from a defensive fullback. Like it is really annoying, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a fair point as well. But you're like, so I, I feel like you know the team. I, you know, you can see that the effort levels are up um, in most yeah, places. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, like I say, the players are doing everything for me. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, I think that. Let me just, I'm just catching up on the note. I make loads of notes, right? I just can't go. Yeah, it's all right, um, it's all right. I don't want to miss anything. Um, no, oh, yeah, I want to touch upon O'Brien now, and obviously, he's been outstanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you know, uh, barring him, we've really lacked quality in that final play, like I say. But I, th- I think for me, the bottom line is, is that we are where we are in terms of the squad right now. We have to accept that. But all we ask as town fans is, you know, to see that max method and, you know, and to grind out, grind out the results that you do need at times, which we have had to do a lot and far too often. Um, I think that, like I say, 
um, you could argue like the Sheffield Wednesday game, you know, we, we should have been winning that game, no end. But like I say, um, things that happened in the game, maybe it was a good point in the end. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Um, we, you know, we, we just need to get a few more points, then we can start building on uh, and preparing yeah. for the uh, transfer window. Like I say, like I say, we touched on it earlier, it's massive. Uh, we need we we need to sign players who have the skill level as well as the effort that is required to be a Huddersfield Town player. And this is this is you know it's 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 got to a point now where we have to get them right. right yeah, right. yeah. I think that's the problem with Campbell. Like you, you can run around, you can do, you can work as much as you want, but you're a striker. You know, obviously most strikers that, you know, do get the ball, like, are just running around, pressuring the defence. You normally have someone next to them who then goes and bangs them in, but we don't. So I don't think playing Campbell as someone who runs around and tries to get the ball is such a good idea when someone like Tenogo, who isn't a finisher, you know, he is a striker, but he can't score, you know. He's missed a penalty, he's missed sitters week in, week out. He missed one against QPR. He's, yeah. he's so annoying. So we can't expect to see, like, oh, yeah, but... Now that you know Campbell's job is actually working for us, because it isn't working for us. You know, if Sonoga was scoring goals from you know the pressure that Campbell produces, then yeah, I'd be all right. But what Campbell is doing is not actually doing anything. It's not actually like you know doing anything further on in the game. Like yeah, yeah. Like I say, I think Campbell's playing the most football he's ever played in his career. To be honest, but not making an excuse for him there, but. No, in terms of Sonoga, I know you said that he's, you know, the start to his career, you know, to Huddersfield Town life hasn't been great, but you've got to look at, yes, okay, we brought him in and, you know, we, we can say that he hasn't, you know, played football for a, a long time. And maybe that's something to do with the fact is that, you know, he, he does look quite rusty when he's, you know, when, when he's yeah. trying, you know, and like that penalty. That game that he missed the penalty and we're diverting again, but that game that we missed the penalty, I think he deserved that goal because... Yeah, I thought he did really well. His overall play was excellent on that day, for sure. But the fact that he's missing quite a few chances and he's not looking that sharp, can't you really look to the fact is that he hasn't played that much recently, maybe, that you know, yeah. in terms of having a club for so long? That's the problem with him. Like, I genuinely think, like, these, like, I think Sergio is a quality player. But we brought him in so that he could. We were brought him in for goals, not to help, not to bring other players into the game. Because it's all right, you know, he can bring other players into the game. But when you're bringing like players like that can't score goals into the game, it don't really help, you know. Obviously, we brought him in because Campbell wants scoring goals, I and mean, we wanted Campbell to do like a job where he's pressure, 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 slip balls into Sonogo. Sonogo ain't doing that. Sonogo's doing the total opposite. He's bringing other players into the game. So it's just a cycle of kind of no goals, no good strikers. And even Karoma, Karoma's not always, I don't see him as, a, he's like a grant player, he can play on the wing, he just likes to cut in. So we're still going to even have that problem when Cam, when Karoma does come up, we're still going to have that problem, we're still going to need that other player that can be next to Karoma or still be able to front because obviously we don't know where Karoma will play when he comes back. So we still need a striker, even if Karoma does come back and play as well, we still need one. Yeah, we st- we, the, the bottom line is we, we, we know that we still need a clinical striker that will score you a lot of goals. And I know the hard to fact come by and I appreciate that but we've got to get find somebody that can score more than what we're producing at the minute because like I said we're not yeah, exactly. which can't surely be that hard and right. I'm not being harsh at all there but that is the reality and yeah, exactly true. like you know you can't you can't be any there's no one you can get someone for five million or under that's better than Campbell like you know yeah we might not get the best finisher but it's someone adding another extra five or six goals that were missing and maybe they're scoring them goals. I don't care if they're not like Ivan Tony standard. Like I'm not asking for a striker of that caliber. I'm asking for a striker who scores like go- who was a finisher because I, I don't care if he's a crap finisher because, you know, at least he tries to score the goals instead of what Campbell and Sonogo do where they don't necessarily want to shoot. You know, they like to bring other players into the game. Campbell likes to put that pressure on. So, yeah. It's- so... Would you would you look to keep Campbell this summer? Because obviously his contract's out. So what would you do with that situation? I'm just curious to know because I know you're obviously I, Campbell in that aspect, but I'm just wondering. I don't know. I just I like the I like the guy as a person and his personality and obviously what he is what he means to the club. But in terms of what he does, like if we go out and don't buy a striker, of course we need to keep him because you know even if Karoma does come back and play as well, we're going to need to keep Campbell anyway because you know unless we go out and buy someone, that is if we buy someone. Campbell can go for me. If we don't, then Campbell has to stay, obviously, because once again, we can't 
buy no one and sell a player. It don't work like that, especially when we've got no depth. We can't just go, oh, we'll sell a player, but we won't buy one in replacement, you know. But, but surely that has to be the top priority this summer. Surely. Yeah, exactly. It's got goals. So there's no excuses on that front. So to be honest with you, that goal scorer that we, we all know that we need and the club know that we need has to happen, unfortunately. So I'm just yeah. wondering, would you have him a player as maybe that could come on and change a match? Could you see that in him, maybe? If he were to stay, if we were to buy a striker and he still stayed, yeah, of course, because I think Campbell is better off the bench. Like, he never comes off the bench because he normally starts and gets subbed off. But if he, I think he'd be better in a game where we'll have a lose. I don't know. If we're, he's one of them players who can play like, if we're trying to sit back, he's one of them players who can kind of cause their problems. When they're trying to like make an attack, like if we're sitting back, he's one of them players that can kind of just pause their attack. You know, he can kind of stop that player from happening. But I don't see him as a player who's good at winning your games when you're nil-nil. Like, he ain't one of them players who scores your goal. He's one of them players that kind of, once the goals are scored, then he can kind of come on and do what he needs to do. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Anyway, uh, time will tell on that one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like we're, you know, we're really good on the counter-attack at times, you know, but I feel like we waste far too many opportunities. Yeah, exactly. On the counter -attack. That is the problem. On, you know, it, it's, on, we saw it on Saturday as well, we had numerous chances that we counter-attacked, but, you know, it, it's just wasting them and it, and it just feels, that's kind of, I, I don't want to say I feel disappointed that we didn't win on Saturday. I just felt like we could quite easily have won that game had we have managed the game a bit better. And, but you can look at it in another way as well. You could look at it that Brentford, you know, you know that uh, last final, you know, final 10, 15 minutes. They were really pushing on, so um, you could say that we could have lost that game as well. But I'm just looking at, at it from when we scored the opening goal and how we could have, um, you know, managed that game a bit better, really. But yeah, I don't know. We, we could have got the win, really. But um, like I said, yeah. Brent are a very good exactly. start. I'm not taking it away from them. Um, yeah. Like I said, I think O'Brien. You know, coming back to O'Brien, obviously, he, he's always you know causing a nuisance, nuisance in himself off the ball as well. And like I say. He's, you know, his skill set is just incredible. Like I say, he, he's persistent dribbling, you know, the speed that he reacts as well, you know, the, he, he's so quick to pounce on the ball that, you know, every opportunity. And like I say, he has that ability. He has that energy level. <laughs> he's still, he's still like his play, you know, when he's like running in the like 88, 89 minute, he still looks like he's only played like a minute or so. And it's like, yeah, exactly. he has that ability to go box to box for, for 90 minutes constantly and that's just you know and, and you know his vision as well is something that really um uh, but what what i'm trying to say is that you know on current form he's at a absolutely outstanding level and you could argue that um you know he's a player that is better than the championship not just for football, but the better than the, and the problem that i have is that the concern that I have with the form, I know it's not a concern because he's helping us out and he's actually making us uh, stay in this league. But if we look towards the summer, we're going to really struggle to keep a man of his calibre in this squad because, you know, he'll, he'll have a lot of interest from, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, like I say, he's got one year left in his contract as well now. So would you say this is the best time to maybe let him go? Uh, obviously very reluctantly because he offers so much to the team. Uh, but, like I say, he's our most talented player by by far. Would you say it was a good time to cash in on him now if his contract is running now? Or what would you... I'd be interested to see if he could, if we could keep him and maybe time down to another deal, but I don't know if that's possible. But yeah, it seems like it's going to be yeah. a struggle to keep hold of him this yeah, summer. Exactly. Long I don't know what you're it's one of the, yeah, It's one of these problems with the club in general is coming to sign players because... I was reluctant to sell Grant, not because, not because of like we we need well we did need him obviously, but I knew we weren't going to go buy anyone to you know replace, and we were lucky that yeah, Karoma kind of just happened to pop up and kind of in a way feel a bit. Obviously he got injured, but if Karoma don't happen, we we are in the relegation zone. You take off his like what he's got like nine goals before he got injured. You take off them goals, we are like bottom. We are bottom, and you know. So, like, in a way, we just won't recruit. You know, we sell O'Brien for, depending on, you know, depending on the, the price, let's say we bought, sold him for 50 million. We won't go buy anyone to replace him. We'd keep that money. It's either, and obviously some people say, oh, yeah, but Dean Noyle's nicking money off us or, you know, paying him back. 
you know, yeah, maybe, I don't know, but it's the same with the grant money. What have we done with that money? Because there's no way that, and one of the things is every deal that we sell players at, it was the same way, like Moy, it was the same with Billing, they were all indisclosed. So they obviously don't want us to know how much we sold them for because they've probably sold them for pennies. Or they just want to like, you know, where is this money? If we have sold him for like over 15 million, where's that 15 million going? Because, you know, I don't think, you know, Yaya Sonogo is worth like, you know, like it's just, why are we buying Yaya Sonogo and all these players for free? Well, actually, we had the money. You know, we've definitely had over 10 million from Grant. So it's not like we can't spend that money. Obviously, we're, we were pretty fortunate out of so many clubs in this league, in this pandemic, that we've been able to sell a player that's been playing really well for a good amount of money, probably. Yeah, yeah, I, t- I totally agree. Like I say, nobody knows where this money's going. Like I say, you could argue that maybe if you look at the players that we brought in and, and, and you know, and you know, we haven't spent much, but then you've got to look at the wage side of it. We may have not got them, we've not spent enough on, you know, we haven't spent the money on transfers as such, but then it's the wage that goes with that. The money's gone to people that, I don't know, I don't like to speculate, but the money's gone to people that don't want the, you know the fans to know where yeah. but anyway exactly. I'm not going to speak like that yeah, yeah. I understand that point of view that you've got that actually it's been a, it's been a question that I've been asking for ages where has this money gone the amount of money that we got from the Premier League uh, but then you look at the you know the small things about you know about how much you know the wage increases and the things like that and you know and, and, and other aspects of it as well and you think well maybe but there still should be quite a bit of money left. So I, I don't know anyway. It's not for me to answer really, but it is frustrating as a fan to, to know where, where the money has actually gone. Um, yeah. So, um, like I say, I think we've got to make the most out of uh, O'Brien, O'Brien whilst we have him, unfortunately. And like I say, um, I think that's kind of what I feel like at the minute, unfortunately. But um, you never know. But... Um, no, 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 I know he'll have a lot of interest in it. And like I say, town have always been a selling club if they've, they've had an offer come in, you know, that's well, yeah. you, you will have to be at the right price, of course. It's, it will have to be a price that will we will not be able to decline. But yeah. yeah. Um so in terms of player ratings for Saturday, how did you feel like um have you have you got a set uh, player ratings there that you've kind of come up with or, or what I've kinda of, I've kinda of gone through a few, like especially a select few. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say something very controversial here and it kinda of links in for the Norwich game as well. Uh but um Sa is a big like I'm I love him because that he does defend well. But I'm I'm gonna kinda of move on and out of it to the Norwich game as well, what he could bring for that game. I genuinely don't think starting Sa in this game is a good idea. Uh, and the reason why is is when someone goes past Saar, he normally just sticks a leg out. And if Saar gets beaten, he's so big that he'll just sprawl out and end up giving pens away. He's very, like, very like lazy. He's kind of just a bit clumsy. And obviously, he nearly gave away a penalty. On another day, everyone praised him for this game, saying he played really well. But on another day, everyone's slagging him off because he's giving a penalty away that they've probably scored in the end. But I just don't... I think Steam would be a better option to start in this Norwich game. Yes, he is quite old, but I been impressed the way he's come on against certain teams and even started I think he's been quality I think the experience he's got against players like Timu Puki and Buendia who are going to constantly run at our defence on Tuesday night they're going to come at us they're going to bring the game to us so it's going to be one of them games where people like Sa, if he does end up starting they can't you can't be sticking your leg out you've got to stand up you've got to be like no I'm I'm in charge here mate because he will get play I'm if he ends up doing that, I do genuinely see us giving away free kicks or even penalties if Saar does end up kind of getting beaten. And I think Stearman's a better choice in terms of... And once again, I don't think Saar's good. I think he needs a rest now. He's played really well in these last few games. So I don't think... I don't. I think we want to rest him just so that he can keep that form, maybe. We're playing a team in Norwich where I do think this is one of his weaker points. Players that will try and get past you he'll struggle against. I genuinely think Steeman should start this game in terms of kind of experience. And, you know, I genuinely don't see a big difference in between both of them. Yeah, in the air, maybe Sars better. But in terms of defending, they're both basically, you know, they're both as good as each other, really. Yeah, I think I think the pace, though, is the problem, though, because, like I say, I know that, you know, e- either of them have still got a mistake and Steeman's still got a mistake in himself yeah, as exactly. well. I understand what you're saying, but the thing is, is that, you know, 
whoever you play, they'll still struggle with keeping up with these Norwich players. So obviously, mm. I feel like the ratings on Saturday were really pretty much, um, you know, throughout the team were quite high, you know, and, and obviously that reflects on the result. But um, I'm not going to go through all every single player that I rated. But anyway, um, like I said, um, we're going to obviously build, like, obviously talk about Norwich now in more details, obviously. Um, yeah. I really like um, the Norwich manager. I think he's a great manager. I think he's done brilliant. I know that people say that he's had the financial stability to to maybe, um, you know, you know, um, create something special there. But I really like him as a manager, the way he sets out his team, you know, the way he plays, you know. I think it's a really strong uh, foundation that you, like I say, uh, this is going to be our toughest test. And like, I mean, it's obviously, it's not, yeah, yeah, obviously. Uh, not saying no obvious or anything, but I'm just saying this is our, to- this is the best team in the league. Like I said, they've got 84 points. Um, they only need 10 points to secure that promotion I've seen. Um, and like I say, they have got the second best home form in the league with 42 points, one at Carrow Road this season. So it's just, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the players that I've picked out for them, though, that maybe causes a threat, you know, obviously, uh, Max Aaron's is... Uh, yeah, he's come back now, because obviously they didn't play last game. Oliver Skip and him were obviously on the international duty within the 21. So obviously they, they didn't play last week against Preston, but they actually dropped points. But they'll be back, which will be hard. That'll be a nuisance. And obviously yeah. they've got other players like Wendy, uh, Puke, you know, never end. Even Cruel in net. Obviously, we will have a lot of shots in this game, but, he, you know, chances we have to take... We're going to struggle because he's really good. I definitely really like so I picked out Uen Deer as well. You know, like he's been outstanding this season. Like I say, he's got 11 goals and 12 assists in the league this season. And I know he's quite quick as well. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> cause all sorts of problems tomorrow evening. But um, like I say, all we can do is is just give it our best. And like I say, just um, like I say, um, you know, just try and disrupt their play because, like I say, you know. The odds are stacked against us to, to get anything tomorrow. I understand that, but I still go back to the fact is that the unpredictability of this yeah, exactly. is real. And you like, just, we, you know, yeah, so, like we've played teams in the last few weeks that have been up there, and we've and they've turned up to be a bit awful. I know he's coming down, and especially at this time of the season, there is more chance of us beating Norwich now than there is, you know, maybe three months ago. Like. Obviously, they did drop points against Preston, where, yeah, they should have won. They had um, countless chances. Obviously, Preston are a little bit better than us, but obviously, we probably will make more mistakes in this game than Preston did. But uh, obviously, they have, you know, we, you know we, we've drawn against Cardiff, and before we played Cardiff, there were, what, like 12, 13 games unbeaten under Mick McCarthy. So, obviously, they were really good. You know, we've played Brentford. They weren't good either. You know, obviously... They probably were a bit, obviously, they were better than us, but like in the game over, especially in the attacking way. But, you know, we've played teams up there that have not turned up when they've played. And I know we're away as well. So, obviously, them two teams that we did play were at home. But we yeah. we will struggle in that sense. But I think when you said about the pace, I genuinely don't know how we'll set up for this match because the, we like to play attacking football. We like to push up the field. But I don't know. I genuinely think we, we're going to struggle in this match as in tactically setting up because no matter how we set up, they're always going to be able to overload us no matter how how even tactically called around to set up because depending who you play at that back, you know, even if you play three at the back, obviously we are going to struggle to contain some of their players. So I do genuinely see it being a game where actually does Corbin set up to just go for the maybe go for the early goal? But then again, it's one of the games we like to go for an early goal and sit back. Do we go for an early goal or and keep going, or do we go for an early goal? Well, it, well we might not even get the early goal. You never know. But yeah, it will be interesting to see how it to how we, how we, you know how he sets up and how it how it turns out the start as much. Like I say, Pookie's been amazing. Like I say, he's proper goal poacher. And like I say, if we give him space in the box, he'll score. That's for sure. So we need to be careful. But like I say, Norwich obviously conceded late. Um, against Preston, so there is a goal in there that they do concede. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Preston are slightly better than us, but not much better than us, to be honest with you. Because, like I said, the table reflects that. They know they know they're not that far ahead of us, really. Um, like I say, um, Norwich have drawn the last two, which maybe gives us a bit of hope. But obviously, they are unbeaten in the last eleven. But we're unbeaten in our last five, and like I say, we've got to look at the positive. But the problem is, is that. We really do need to have the players available that we need because I know that um, I don't know if you've caught the Carlos um, press conference today, but uh, Peeper and Vallejo, uh, 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 you know, set to have a you know like medical test to see if they're going to be ready. Which is if we don't have those two in there, which I would 
personally, what I do is I would set up the same as what we did against um, Brentford if yeah. we are able to. But obviously, if these two miss the game, it will be yeah. a big loss. Yeah. Uh, I think Edmunds Green is fit to play, so we might see him coming, depending on whether he wants to start. If Vallejo isn't fit, then obviously he might start Steam Man, might start Edmunds Green. Obviously, in terms of pace, I'd start Edmunds Green because he has got a bit more pace than obviously the rest of them lot. But obviously, maybe Steeman would be good to bring on. It just depends because I genuinely, if we can get through the first 45 minutes without them shipping two goals or even a goal, I think that's good. We've just got to work. It's got to be 100%. Don't start Bakuna. Just don't do that. I just, I like, it's just not good. We need players in this game like where they're going to do, they're going to give summer, they're going to work. Oh. They're going to do a job. You know, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if they're better than... It doesn't matter if one of the players that we've got normally starting is not as good as them. You know, if they do, if they actually put 100% in, then I don't care how good you are. Like, you know, if you're doing a job, you grind it out because it's not going to be one of them free-flowing games. You know, even... We thought Brentford wouldn't be a free-flowing game and it wasn't a free-flowing game. But if Norwich turn up because it's getting to that point where obviously Watford won today, so they're going to put a bit more... They definitely want to win the title. They know that they're only 10 points off it. So I genuinely do think we're going to... They're going to come. They're going to play the football that they want to play. We're going to struggle and I just... we. But if we can do that job, it, I just it's a hard game to preview because there isn't a lot of like... You can't really say yet yeah, if we set up like this, it'll work because genuinely they've got a great manager. They've got n- n- numerous players who are just going to cause problems for 90 minutes. So it genuinely isn't about how we set up. It's about how the players play because, you know, yeah. it's just going to be one of them games where it's all down to the players, not the tactics. Well, like I said, we saw in that first season in the Premier League as well, you know, we, we stayed up on work rate and we were nowhere yeah. near as good as these teams that we're playing against, but the work rate was there. So we could kind of look at that model for tomorrow evening. You know, if we really put in a good, sh- you know, a really top shift, you know, and, and see if that works. Because, like I say, if we do our best to try and get a result, that's all you expect, really. But, yeah, I think that is that. And we've gone over quite a bit. But let me just check to the comments yeah. before we go, because I know we've had a few questions here. Um, what do you think to Aiton coming back? Uh, apparently he's coming back now to close the season now. I think that'll be a big boost for us, really, to be yeah, honest. Definitely. It was just obviously, coming. yeah, I saw on Instagram that he did, uh, obviously, a back in Huddersfield, back training. I think he's, I don't know if he's come back to, well, he landed in Huddersfield on, I think it was Saturday, actually, I think it were when we played. So, whether he's back in training, I don't think Carman said that in his press conference about him being back in training or all but he might just he might be we never know but obviously he's going to be obviously there's only like a few games left but definitely we could see him in them last four games and obviously we've got to realise like obviously after Norwich now we've got a few games that we need to pick points up in that won't be as high as but then obviously we've got Reading at the last game of the season we've still got Barnsley to play as well which is I'm really I don't want to play Barnsley man it's going to be embarrassing especially how, how they turned out last season and and it, that that's also another you know another topic for another day. How uh, we've managed to they managed to be absolutely shocking. They stayed up because of a point deduction for Wigan, and now the fifth they've won today again. They've got about a six seven point gap over in the playoffs. They're like bloody one point off Swansea now, and Swansea just keep losing. So you know it's a bit embarrassing there as well. Yeah, it's crazy the way fortune is concerned for sure, isn't it? But um, mm. like I say. Um, it's, 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 I think it's one for another day. Um, um, Charlie Brown has put, going to be a tough game for the steel, but an upset is always on the card in the championship. You know, like I say, we touched upon that and, you know, mm-hmm. it's fine. you just never know uh, what will happen. But like I said, yeah, long exactly. as we find, I, I, it'll be interesting to see how we start the game. Like I said, we've already touched on this. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think that yeah. was... Yeah. Um, Go on. Yeah, I genuinely think with this start of this game is we've started most of the games we've actually started like in the last few weeks have been where we've really done really well and they've done really bad. But if they start good, I, I, it, I genuinely still think whoever kicks off is going to start better. Like, I genuinely do believe in that stuff. Like if we kick off, I think we'll start better. But if they kick off, they'll start better. And obviously depending on their lineup, because obviously Max Aaron's and Skip are fit to play. 
they might not start. So obviously, if they don't start, that's a positive. Obviously, we can hope that they won't start. But Cantwell still um, fit. He were playing last week, and he's just he's a class ball. One of my favourite Championship players. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Pookie's going to bang it. You know, that's one of the things we've got to stay tight. We've got to be compact in that defence. We can't leave gaps like we did against Brentford, especially for that goal. He will put them in. You know, I thought that goal that we conceded was light. You know, if he's in front of goal it's not going to be light it's going to be right in the roof of the net it's going to be over for us in that sense and obviously Buendi is going to be running at players constantly obviously we know Pippa as well we're going to whoever's going to play on that side next to Buendi is going to have to put a bit if it is De Haney, I'm actually quite excited to see how he'll face that challenge against Buendi because obviously Buendi can play both sides so if De Haney plays right back Buendi might play left mid, but if he doesn't then you know sad times but like you know yeah, I'm really excited to see if De Haney does end up matching up against Burnley. That will actually be pretty good to see, actually. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how he he comes up if he's chosen, of course. But like you say, you mentioned these players that have scored loads of goals this season previously. But to me, we seem to have nullified those in previous games, like Tony. You know, players yeah. uh, Keith and Moore as well when we played Cardiff. We seem to nullify the players that <laughs> that score a lot of goals but then we kind of let our standards yeah. like that kind of thing so you think but like I say a squad like Norwich you know I don't think it yeah. matters who plays in Norwich you know they've got such a strong squad and, yeah. strong squad, and it's just yeah all we yeah. can do is a, is, a, is a good um, you it's know genuinely for us like if we are concentrating in this game we'll be alright defensively but like against Brentford when they hit the post and scored you know if we switch off they will score like three or two goals because obviously against Brentford we were lucky that they had a shot scored then hit the post but then it kind of went they went quiet again but Norwich won't do that obviously Norwich against Preston were very unlucky because even though the draw won one they were just going forward forward chances after chances and obviously they did miss a few obviously it is another day so you know we could end up shipping another four or five you know depending on how we turn up yeah, like I say, let's let's hope not. And don't, yeah. <laughs> don't do but like I say, I, I, I do think there's something else to consider here, is that you know the way Norwich play. Obviously, will there be that chance to have more? You know, you know when we're playing a team that is so maybe attack minded, for example, will we have yeah. maybe chances that will we have chances ourselves? And you know the mm. counter opportunities that we may have, we have yeah. to take those chances though if we do get a yeah, chance that's the problem that is the problem and I do but that's different for, even though Norwich are very attacking I do they are so solid at their back like you know they even though they attack in numbers they'll be defending in numbers at the same time so we've really got to take we've got to take advantage of when we do catch them whether we do or not set pieces once again you know depending on how many set pieces we get obviously it might not be like the Brentford game where they take us down every time we get near the bloody box but like you know it could be one of them games where every set piece we get, corner, free kick in their out, it's got to be good because we stick. That, and just going back to Brevigan, just for a sec, on set pieces, their goalkeeper was so dodgy. Why don't you just stick it down his neck, stick it down his throat, do it to Crook? You know, Crook, he might be a you know really good keeper, but like, you know, if we're getting these free kicks, just chuck them in oh, that six yard box and get Sar in there and yeah he might give away a foul but at the same time there's a chance that he won't and will score a goal you know try it just try something new instead of just you know I don't, I don't care if that ball goes in that front post and their keeper catches it because we, but at least we tried like you know I do care though if we hit it and it goes to their first man and they're off on counter attack you know yeah I know what you're saying though but like I say you know, give him that. You know, you know, you know, fire one into crew, like you say. See how he deals with it. See what you know, what he's yeah, like. Exactly. Uh, for example, if you get the opportunity. But like I say, I think set piece the key definitely tomorrow evening. You know, we do need yeah. to our game from recent from recent time. Like I say, we've been so poor at set pieces, but also defensively as well. We need we we cannot afford. I know that it's easy to do because sometimes the best option is to bring a player down if they if they're too quick for you. But we need to yeah. try. You know. You know, be clever with where we foul him because you know we don't mm. want to be giving you know free kicks in stupid areas or giving away a penalty even worse. You know, but yeah, so yeah, much, exactly. so much topic of conversation. But yeah, but, yeah. But genuinely though, like in terms of like whether like set pieces is one of them where like we're just I don't know how to say, but like we're just not that good and if we need the only way we'll win this game is Norwich do concede a lot of goals from set pieces in oh. terms of especially in the last few minutes against Preston I think it was like a corner that were chucked around in the box scrambled and bang 
and we've seen it loads of times. We've seen it loads of times. We saw it today. Preston did that again against who were at Swansea. You know, teams will do that. When you're playing a good team, set pieces are key. And I think you know, set pieces are key against any team, especially when you're not necessarily making that many chances. But like, we've got to take chances, obviously. You know, depending on, you know, maybe even, I hope, I, I don't know about him, Benza. Maybe he'll start. I don't know. He hasn't started for a few weeks. So I don't see him starting again tomorrow. But like, yeah. hopefully, maybe we can see him maybe in the first half get on the pitch for the starting lineup because we're really going to need that early goal, you know. A goal is important, but we're going to need that second goal. It's going to be a really tough challenge because even if we do get that first goal, you, you, you can't. We can't sit back on it. Definitely. No, I think I'm hoping that Carlos will learn from Saturday. Really, in terms of that, you know, you know, we cannot afford to be, you know, when we score, sit back because it's just not going to work against a team like Norwich. It may do against a team that's maybe lesser of, but not against a team like Norwich. Unfortunately, it won't yeah. work. So uh, it will be interesting to see how it plays out. But like I said, I'm just really hoping that we can. Keep that unbeaten run going, you know. Even if it's yeah. just a point, even if it's yeah. Like in this game, though, fair. I don't care if we play crap. Like normally, I do care when we play crap. Like, but like if we play shocking and still get a point, I'm fine with that because you know. I don't think we will though. I don't think we will get a point if we play that bad. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Like I want us to play good. If we do play crap and like. I, I thought against Brentford that second half, we were shocking. We were lucky to even get that point, especially after the chances that like little ten minute period where they had a few chances. So definitely, but obviously it's got to be a hard working game. We aren't going to be able to play this free flowing football. You know, it's going to have to be one of them games where actually it's going to be scrappy football. You know, no matter what Carlos wants from these players, they will make it hard for us for ninety minutes. It's got, you know, they've got so much depth, so it's not going to be like one of the players gets subbed off because as soon as whoever else is coming on is going to do the exact same job as them to a, you know, same level. So it's going to be one of the games, 90 minutes or whatever it is, and it's going to be full grind. We've got to work hard. And if we get some, if we don't, if, the thing is, if we lose, but put 100% in, I'm fine with that. Yeah, we're all fine with that though, aren't we? You know, if we yeah, give exactly. everything, then we're not we, we really... You know, know. I've seen that for years, you know. Yeah. Put all that work in, especially in that Premier League, uh, Premier League put work in every week, I don't care. We lose, we lose, but, you know, yeah. Yeah, that that, that proper team spirit and, you know, that working out for it. That's all you expect, like I say, that's all we've always expected as town fans, just to see the players doing everything, really, so... Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll look ahead. We'll, you know, we'll have to watch and see what happens tomorrow night. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's not a, not too much of a, um, what's the word? Not too much of a, um, a bad performance. You know, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but maybe I'm just trying to say, hopefully it's not too bad of a watch. Maybe yeah, not so. by the chant, you know, of, you know, of, you know, of Norwich coming, you know, and, and playing, you know, the football that we know that they can produce. But yeah. we have some good football as well. We can't, we can't yeah, just... Yeah, I know. The last time, and they've changed a lot since we last played. Because when we last played, they were shocking. Like, they, I genuinely didn't think after we played in that match, we're like, nah, no, it's what I got this season. Like, they were shocking, but they've done really well, to be fair, to try to turn that form around. Obviously, I know they're on their first game, but they really have got a lot more confidence. Obviously, it starts in, they weren't scoring that many goals. Now, scoring loads of goals, defensively solid, teams quality, the tactics are on point. Obviously, they have a bench full of players. They haven't got any injuries. All the all the players that are back from international duty are all fit and ready to play for tomorrow. So it's going to be one of them games. They need ten points to get promotion. They definitely want the title. So they're gonna they're gonna be up for it. I don't think it's gonna be like Brentford and Cardiff and all these games before where they haven't turned up. They will turn up. They will come. They will well they we we will come. They will you know they're gonna try. They'll definitely put some problems in the spanners for us. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, yeah, like I said, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you everybody. Thank you everybody for joining this evening, and thank you, Ruben, for joining me yeah. as well. It's been great to chat. Like we've gone over, we yeah. over. we've gone so way yeah. over. We're talking about the skill set, and we're, we're always yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what it is. But yeah, Same yeah. questions. <laughs> great to speak to you as always, and thank you. Yeah, everybody. yeah. I'll see you all next week for another episode where we hopefully, um. Of practically be safe, you know. Like I said, we've got we've got one last point. Uh, Rotherham on Saturday yeah. is a massive game. If we win that, yeah. one, so that's the job yeah, I do expect a lot from that game. They lost three 0 today to Wickham, but yeah. we they've got so many injuries. They've got so many players out for COVID reasons. We have to beat them. If we get a point, we are. That's, uh, that's not good enough. We it's have gonna to be. be 
Not even one nil is good enough against them lot because they're playing academy players genuinely. We've got to smash them. We've got to smash them because we won't smash any teams this season. The only team that left that I think we can score more than two goals against is Rotherham left, and that's it. We've got Barnsley, Reading still to play. We've got Norwich tomorrow. Genuinely, got hard. Yeah, even did, no, yeah, because we, last time we played them were nil nil. We haven't played them since then, so. We genuinely have to. Even commentary will be a hard game. They've won three one today, so maybe their forms yeah, going to turn but... around. It's always typical. As soon as we pick up loads of points, you know they start playing good. And especially when the hard games coming in for us, they've managed to pick up a win. And now we've got to go play Norwich tomorrow. So like, that's it's not always helpful, but you never know. Yeah, Might well, win. Like I say, let's hope on uh, you know a positive result tomorrow, and then. Um get the win on Saturday and we'll be all feeling happy and calm and relaxed that we know we're going to stay up this season. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, thanks again for everyone for tuning in and I'll speak to you all later. Thank you so much. Thanks.